back to unleashing. There's a number of topics that I want to discuss here. Um, California approves, I'm reading this right now off my phone, California approves guaranteed basic income. Governor Newsom out of California. What's the date today? It is the 19th, halfway through July. I want to go back here to uh, my notes out of uh, October. All right, Canadian liberal movement, total socialism. The leaked email. These are some of the notes. I made a video of it back in November, okay? I'm going to go right here to the middle point. Transitioning people into a basic universal income by uh, mid of 2021. All right? They're right on schedule. They're doing this all over the place. This is out of Canada, but just like Canada said, they were going to have this implementation from different countries, from their own versions and things uh, all over the world at the same time. And uh, they're right on schedule with all of it. They're, they're moving right into it. And, uh, you know, I could go over some of these notes again on uh, what, they have, uh, what they have planned here right after that. Supply chain breakdown, inventory storage, lar large economic instability expected by late and second quarter of 2021. We've already seen this all over the place. I just got, uh, just got to notice that uh, they're going on strike here up in the Pacific Northwest in the United States. And uh, food's going to be scarce here. There are uh, people from Walmart and uh, Safeway and other places like that that are, that are unionized are going on strike. Uh, truckers not supplying food. Get the food now and stuff like that, okay? Um, but uh, at the top of all this is the bad guys who have been able to uh, get inside the system for a long time, take over the control of it. <clears throat> And, uh, and they get to call the shots so they can make these things happen, all right? And, uh, and they're, they're calling all the shots. Meanwhile, around the world, we're seeing all kinds of catastrophic and crazy weather manipulation going on. And uh, we already know, all right, if you're looking, if you're watching, that uh, we're getting close to uh, the tribulation starting at the end of days, all right? And, uh, and the weather's going to get worse, and there's going to be more bad stuff coming. But some of this stuff also is man-made. We've had a huge heat wave over here in the west and up in the Pacific Northwest, and I saw this heat dome that was centered directly over Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, I, uh, I don't think for a second that it's natural. The first thing I saw, uh, thought of when I saw it was uh, it looks exactly like harp. That's what it does. They can shoot it. It bubbles up the atmosphere, and it causes uh, it can cause uh, atmospheric domes and stuff like that. And that's what it looked like. And they can manipulate and change the weather, which we know that they're doing. They're they're causing drought, famine in different areas. So there's more of a food shortage. Meanwhile. Bill Gates is buying up all kinds of land and has for a long time. They're going to have their GMO food and stuff like that. They're going to be a monopoly on it. And, of course, this is a, a type of weaponry, you know. You don't submit. You don't uh, take your in the shoulder. Uh, you don't get to eat, okay. And, uh, and they're able to control the people. And uh, when people are starving and hungry and stuff, they'll do just about anything, all right. It's so serious in the tribulation. I mean, uh, you have to have a mindset of a lion that uh, you will not allow this line to be crossed. And, uh, and you will not fold under any sort of temptation or anything like that, which we see people doing all over the place, all right? And uh, this is uh, this is for people that are going to be going into it. But, I mean, even up to then, you should always have a warrior's mindset of uh, it's to death because that is the commitment we made when we gave our lives to Christ. It's to the end. It's to live that lifestyle. And, of course, we, back, we backslide. We have issues where we fall and stumble and get down. But for those who have made that commitment unto death always to follow God, uh, then he He has us in his hands and he picks us back up, brushes us off, and, and we have that grace we have for that forgiveness. For those that have just said the prayer and gone about living their daily lives in sin uh, with no intention of ever doing anything for God, uh, that's a completely different story. They never belonged to him in the first place and they will find themselves going directly in the tribulation. This is a lukewarm vomit, okay, that I've discussed multiple times, all right? But uh, uh, it's so serious, and especially where we are right now, you guys, my my whole point in this last video, and I am very frustrated about the whole thing. I've watched it, and I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain it more, okay? But my whole point is that... Uh, I have been holding the line the whole time, and, and I'm telling you the truth, and it's not fun to do this. It's it's a lot of work, and it, and it takes a lot of stuff. So I'm not getting glory out of it. There's a lot of YouTuber out YouTubers out there that are getting glory out of this, right? And they would love to, and they have, love to just put out fake information, anything else that they want, or say that they've heard from God, because if it doesn't plan out, they can say, oh, God told me he moved it back, right? 
Well, I'm not doing that. I'm telling you the truth the whole time. So I get no glory out of that, all right? So he gave me that it was happening this year. The rapture really was, all right, as an encouragement. And that is something that I wanted to give out to people, right? But I'm not doing this for fun, nor uh, nor can I ever fake it. So if it wasn't going to happen, it's my responsibility because I follow God and I love him. He's my first love uh, that I wouldn't be able to talk anymore, right? So making that point like i said this is the last year that i would be able to do this anyways but they're going to be coming after information no matter what this is the tribulation it's going to be starting here in the fall and uh, they're absolutely going to lock down any sort of credible information or truthing or christian networking or anything like that they're going to do whatever they can and that is the importance of having that personal relationship with god all right if uh, any information shuts down or anything like that do you think that that stops somebody like me no i have always had the relationship with god and it will continue on unto death or until rapture all right and that is what I wanted for everybody else. So if you lose information, you're not going, what do I do next? What do I do next? You've already had a plan. You know how to talk to people. And uh, you're already prepared and uh, ready to kick some serious ass, okay? And that is the entire point, all right? To create living weapons. And, uh, and I just haven't seen it, all right? I've seen people waiting to hear more rapture stuff. And, and people coming over from false teachers like Tim Henderson and uh, Barry Scarborough and other people like that that are teaching a once saved, always saved. And you're coming to me because you know that they're not hearing from God. And I'm telling you why. They're not hearing from God because they're false teachers. So those that are hearing from God that are telling you the truth, yeah, you got to repent. You got to walk with them, all right? If you stumble, you know, it's okay. Ask for repentance. Get back up. But you got to stay in the fight. It's a real relationship, all right? when they're teaching right and they do hear from God you want to hear that so you come over because sometimes they get more rapture information or proximity so if you're looking to get out of here that's what you want to hear but you don't get to hear that and think that you go if you're not living that godly lifestyle what would be the whole point how terrible would that be to know the day of the rapture know how close it is and be like yes and then you don't get to go because you weren't walking in in the right way with the with the Lord uh, that would be absolutely terrible all right the demons they know the day is coming. They know it's personal. They're not getting out of here, okay? It's the same way. Those that are gods, he is going to take. He's going to pull out. He's going to remove from this planet before the whole thing goes up. But those that need work and, are content and, and aren't right, uh, they're going into the tribulation. And it's going to be the mass majority. I said I saw eight people, right? It's, it works out to half of 1%. The numbers are incredibly small. And... Uh, and, and it's no joke, and I've warned this time and time again, but it is moving at breakneck speed, and that is the urgency of this, okay? There's not going to be much more time. I never know when the whole thing is just going to be completely shut down, so you always, always have to be re be prepared, okay? There is an encouragement. It is coming back soon, but always be prepared for everything because uh, we don't know exactly how bad it's going to get right before he comes back or what else is going to break loose, and look at these other countries and what's going on around the world right now. There's breakdown happening all over the place. There's rioting and stuff like that, and rightfully so. But a lot of this is also planned and orchestrated, and, and they're using to, uh, you know, cause cause more issues, more death, and uh, ultimately a, a nuclear war, which is gonna, which is gonna kill a bunch more people. And then right about the time when people have had enough of their governments, they'll move it on to the next thing, which would be aliens. And now they all need to trust in their government, and they just keep moving it forward. And if they can keep the people just, you know, completely clueless the whole time, they're just manipulating them as the numbers of the population drop along the way, which is exactly what they want by 2030, to have the population down to half of 1 billion, okay, 500 million people. in a controlled, sustained population, which is going to be mostly the young, where they can f influence their mind the most, all right, and uh, manipulate them up into slaves for the rest of their life and eternity, okay, which is what they want. And anybody that's still in the thinking range, that's grown out of that, or have learned lessons throughout life, they don't want to have any of that, okay? So those people get to, uh, they get to get axed, all right? But the young generation, they can go after and they, manip and they can manipulate, and that's what they want. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go through a few more notes here. Deployment of military into all major metropolitan areas, as well as uh, all major roadways established, travel checkpoints, restricted travel and movement by third quarter of 2021, all right? The way that they've been on this and how smooth it's rolling out, do not put it past any of them, all right? I am guessing this will go directly into effect in the third quarter. We're looking at fall time, maybe late fall of 2021, all right? I totally think that this is going to be uh, tribulation events, all right? 
but always have that warrior mindset of every situation. Don't be freaking out. Trust in God. Pray to Him. Um, but uh, but this is going into effect, okay? And uh, and they're moving right along with it. I mean, I'm looking at these notes. These are from last year, okay, that I wrote in 1026, 2020, okay, with that leaked email. I made that video about it, right? And all of it has been going forward exactly like plan. The whole plan, the whole uh, COVID thing, and everything else. They're just they're just doing it all to uh, to get these people uh, as many as they can, because when the numbers start coming in, when the bodies start dropping. Um, they are literally, if, uh, if they don't have enough people, there's still a mass majority of an anthill that they could just literally overthrow all of them. And they got to make sure that they get the numbers in the prime condition and where they want before they move on to the next thing, World War Three, aliens, so on and so forth as it goes forward. But they're also can counting on this planet system that's coming through, right? That they've been watching now for over 50 years, this Nibiru system. And uh, and it's all been it's all been calculated into this, and it falls between this time. That's why we know that this, this really is the lineup with the 70, 80-year generation spoken of, okay? It's just one more proof of all of that falling directly into play, all right? Um, People are going to be told in order to offset the world economic collapse, the government is going to offer Canadians, this is going to happen around the world too, debt bailout relief, all loans, mortgages, etc. will be funded, <coughs> which will be funded to the Canadian by IMF, will be known as the World Debt Reset Program, all right? We've seen this reset program that they've been talking about, the World Reset uh, the whole time, all right? In exchange, each individual will be given up their rights and property, cars, property, etc. forever, all right? Uh, but the individual will have to uh, partake in the COVID-21 <clears throat> jab schedule, which then provides individual with unrestricted travel living under a uh, full lockdown, okay? Everybody else is going to be put into full lockdown, right, and made miserable. And this continues on uh, until uh, getting up to the point where... Uh, if you, you don't have it, you're indefinitely in lockdown, all right? Which you're going to starve and stuff like that. That's their whole point. And uh, those that still refuse are going to be starting to be put in the FEMA caps by uh, by uh, next year or late this year, okay? And they've already been working on them and getting them in set and everything like that. But it, the point is that all of this is just lining up, all right? Newsome and other guys are in the pockets of uh, Masons, the Illuminati, Satanists, and stuff like that, all right? That are already bought out these governors that are part of this, uh, that Michigan governor and stuff like that. They are already a part of it, and uh, if they can work this mass majority, you know, then uh, that's what they do. And whenever the heat starts to come on too much, they just hand the ball off like a lateral football term to another country where they start to push forward even further. And then the country that uh, just said, hey, that's getting bad, then they say, hey, look, they're doing it. And then they just hand it right back, and they all are moving together uh, into this new world order. And it's at breakneck speed. It's literally happening. And it's going to be allowed to happen, all right? This is the tribulation, and it's going to be taking place, okay? Oh, man, deception's out there through the roof. And uh, the, some of the comments that I, that I see and I have to address here, you guys, you have to know your enemy. A couple years ago, I was watching Sid Roth, all right? And they had a guest speaker on there. I don't even know what he was talking about at the point. But I watched it happen. It was so, so fast. And I just looked like at all these people. I'm like, unbelievable. You're just, it's just so fast. And uh, what had happened was is uh, they brought this guy on. He was a guest speaker about uh, demon demonology and other stuff like that. Possessions and stuff. And uh, the crowd was all sitting there excited to listen to him. And... Uh, <clears throat> and he came on and uh, he uh, told the crowd, you know, that it paid money to be on the Sid Ross show and everything like that, you know, and they're all excited to be there, get this information. As he talked to them, he said, yeah, you know, demon possession, and, and he brought up the point and everything like that, but he's like, but you guys are all Christians, and I know that you'd be able to tell that instantly. You'd be able to see it, and you can spot those sort of things and pick it out, right? And then he moved on, and I watched as all the the crowd kind of looked at each other, got their got their egos bumped up a little bit, and then continued on and, and waited for what he was going to say next, waited for the big secrets, and just like that, just in that split second of bribery, they were all bought off, and uh, and and their minds were all put exactly right where uh, right where he wanted it to be, and I couldn't believe it because it happened so fast. Every single one of them. 
were bribed off in that very point when they were told that not only did they pay the money so they were expecting to get the good stuff, but now they were there and then bribed up and told because they were Christians they would be able to spot any demon possessions and things like that in people. So now their ego's bumped up. Yeah, we can spot it. All right, This guy who's an expert that we've paid to listen to is telling us that, that, that we're good enough. So then they instantly look over it, and now that they got the secrets, and they think that they're about to get the real juicy stuff, they give him full undivided attention, which now he can start to pour in the lies and the deception directly into them. Because that's not the case at all. I have to get to a spiritualist sermon. I'm one of the best on the entire planet, okay? Even I can talk to people, and there are demons that can be so hidden inside the person that they don't even show up. They're, they're not even on the level yet. And then you start talking about Jesus or mention something and it spikes it and then they'll show their face and they'll pop out, okay? I'm the best of the best. And they can still even stay hidden from me. When I was talking to that hoodoo practitioner that we didn't know at the time when I was over in North Dakota, um, it was totally hidden until I mentioned that I, uh, I do preacher work and uh, I talk to people about God and stuff like that. And then he popped out all of the faces. I was already on to a few things that the guy was talking about with languages and stuff like that. But uh, it just goes to show you the deception, the bribery. You always have to be careful because people will buy you off just like that. And I watched it happen in that whole Sid Roth show. Every single one of them just got bought off just like that and were manipulated and now trusting somebody who would, would eventually lead them astray or, or tell them something that wasn't true and it's not the case you always have to be vigilant you always have to be watching and uh and uh and praying and uh, and listen to everything that's going on the fruits of people what's coming out of them and stuff like that because the enemy is sly and they and they can slip stuff in just like that over the top of your head no you don't always know when somebody has a demon in them, okay and uh and that's why you have to be vigilant all right and you don't trust everybody who just says every little thing right you compare it to scripture you pray about it you talk to god and stuff like that all right and this gets into the, the other point all right people that i've scolded lately or talked to that are listening to people like cat care the prophet okay the pink haired lady that talks about going to heaven and stuff like that you need to know that is a witch all right that doesn't make any sense to you. Oh my gosh, she's been to heaven and stuff like that. Let me tell you, there are churches around the U.S. and stuff where you can go into these congregations and pay money and these Christian leaders, occultic practitioners, will take you on trips to heaven and things like that, okay? You're not actually going to heaven, all right? You might be seeing other realms, doing astral projections and stuff like that. This is demonic activity, okay? And it is the same thing with that. When people are bringing out angel cards and angel boards, all right? The cross-references, cross that those are tarot cards, and those are Ouija boards, all right? Inside the churches, all right? That has nothing to do with God, all right? That's why I've said flee the churches for a long time, the building. It's an abomination. Have the personal relationship. Read a couple chapters in the Bible. Every single day, you should know it by like the back of your hand now. So I'm not talking fast. When I'm referencing these different things, you're like, oh, he's mentioning that. He's mentioning that. Oh, ambassadors. That's what Paul talking about because we're all ambassadors for God and just as an ambassador before this whole thing breaks loose we get pulled out of here you know the reference that I'm talking about okay and that is why you should have been doing it the whole time so you know it's a two-edged sword not only is it refining you God fix me in this area cleanse me from all unrighteousness but uh, when somebody tries to pull over something fast oh that's not true at all somebody brings up another religion you pull out Galatians you know uh, that's a completely other gospel. Let, let uh, everything you're saying be accursed, okay? You know it. And, and that's the whole reason that you're reading it. And you, it is overwhelming to read the whole thing at once. That's why you do a little bit at a time. You constantly are digesting it, bringing it in, keeping it fresh. And when you go over it again, new things will pop out and stuff like that. It's that personal relationship. And then praying for people during the day, okay? And, it, and it's so, so important. Yesterday when I was on the beach... A guy came up and he sat down on the bench and we started talking. <clears throat> and as usual fashion, you know, uh, I see where it goes. And then if I can help lead that person to God or, or at least give some pointers or, or uh, anything like that. Most of the time, I'm going to be honest with the game that we have going on right now. Most people are not turning to God. If you get that opportunity, take it. Lead them into prayer and, uh, and tell them what they need to do. And uh, that's wonderful. But most of them are not doing that, okay? It's this information you're giving on what's going to happen and what they're going to need to do when they go into the tribulation. I understand that. I've said it a million times, okay? All right. And most of the time when I'm talking to people, that's exactly what it is. And it's like, hey, if you see this and it's coming and death's rolling in and you don't, uh, you didn't take any of this serious, remember this stuff. Get on your knees. Ask for repentance, you know? And ask, ask the Lord to save you and give your life to Him on the
the spot. He will honor that, but you're going to die, okay? And that's kind of the message, okay? But as I talked to this guy, some more stuff got brought out. I'm looking for any openings I can. He told me that uh, he used to live with his grandma and uh, learned guitar and stuff like that. I read the Bible when he was a kid. And then I got an opening. I'm like, you read the whole thing? He's like, yeah, I have. I'm like, oh, you must know the story of Jonah. He was like, oh, yeah, definitely. And then that opened up. The Jonah conversation, all right? What happened on June 11th? How we're getting close to the 40 day mark right here, how things are lining up, which opened up how he's been seeing the world going into uh, what looks like blindness as the Titanic's about to go down, which opened up more biblical prophecy, talking about different things, which opened up a completely other conversation about some of the stuff that he got into when he was doing psychology and a teacher that was teaching him different things, including astral projection and stuff like that. During this process, just like the Caesar Brad story out of Romania and stuff like that, the Masons came in to recruit him. And what did they want him to do in the area that I'm at right now? They wanted him to go around to the different individual churches and pull people out one at a time. Start pulling him from the churches, turning him from God. They wanted to hire him to bring him into the fold to do that. This guy didn't do that. But uh, it gets into the whole kind of what I wanted to talk about, but there's so many different things, so I don't even know what to categorize this at, as uh, moves and counter moves, all right? It's been happening the whole time throughout history, you know? Uh, God's going to use Israel. Satan brings in the Nephilim, and they fill up Canaan, okay? But God makes a counter move, and uh, he, he gives the Jews the power. They go in there, Joshua style, and, uh, and, and they end up killing them, and God's throwing rocks out of heaven, literally, and killing more Nephilim than them, but they showed their courage, all right? That's why I have a problem with people that say, we don't do the battles, God does it for us, all right? Yes, but we show we show everything that we can, and we go in there only when we're up against the Red Sea, and there's nothing left, and our total reliance is on God, and then we go into prayer, okay, and, and faith in that, but uh, but we're always, we're always pushing, we're always fighting, okay, but, uh, and then God shows up, he honors that, it's a symbiotic relationship, okay, and, uh, you know, just looking over the different things, okay? Roswell happens in 1947, okay? What happens at the same time? The Dead Sea Scrolls are found, okay? Which opens up a whole other door. It's another counter move. While aliens and stuff are coming out on the scene, creating the last great day's deception that's going to be taking place, and reverse engineering starts with a huge, huge uh, scientific boom in, uh, in the whole scientific community and, and the research where we're thousands of years in advance now, leading up to galactic federations and everything like that that we're involved in, all right? At the same time, the Dead Sea Scrolls come out, uh, you know, fulfilling uh, all kinds of different things and showing different proofs where scientists for years had looked into Daniel 11 and seen the historic accuracy of it. And they're like, no, that's too incredible. That is pinpoint accuracy on what happens and leading up to Antioch, Antioch Epiphanes and stuff like that. And uh, literally, that had to be written after the time. And then they find the Dead Sea Scrolls, and they're dated way before that time. And it's like, uh, so much for that theory. That goes out the window. Or Mormonism, where, you know, they're told that uh, uh, the, ta uh, the information has been documented or uh, messed up over time. Over time, so Joseph Smith had to come out. And then they go back in the Dead Sea Scrolls that are a thousand years way before. And uh, it's all historically accurate with what we have with the Bible right now, still kept in line, uh, word for word. And it just blows that completely out the window, okay? It's moves and counter moves, and it's happening all the time. But listening to that, uh, that story about how, you know, they tried to get him to go in there, go into different churches and stuff like that. This is, he's not the only one that's getting that, all right? Other people around have got that and are doing that. The enemy is a roaring lion and goes around looking for anybody he can devour. And the easiest ones to do that to are those that don't know the Bible, don't know Scripture, are doing a dilly-dally walk with God, all right? Look at, uh, look at your preterists, all right? How stupid can you possibly be to think that all this took care and all happened in 70 AD and we're going into glory days and uh, we're going to take everything back by force? And, uh, you know, and then God's going to come back at some time. But uh, we're living our best life right now as literally you watch tribulation unfold step by step perfectly in order with what they have planned in a timeline that fulfills the 70, 80 year generation. I mean, you'd have to be completely spiritually blind, which they are because they weren't uh, walking in the first place. God's not their first love. Uh, the world is and uh, and being a preterist uh, conveniently fits that but at the same time hey I believe in God so you get to call that in at the last time and go to heaven do you uh, no most likely not right and it's no joke it's serious but uh, 
listening to that, it, uh, it, sparked, uh, it sparked some anger in me that I've already had the whole time and what I've told you guys. You know, in 2017, <clears throat> I was pointing out, hey, get right with God. This thing's about to go down, and then it didn't. And God told me, as I was going up that mountain, are you going to stop? And I told him, no, I'm not going to stop. I'll keep talking, all right? And he said, good, you can ride with me. And I knew exactly what he was talking about, all right? It's the honor of riding back with him into glorious battle in Armageddon, all right? And it's a and it's an extreme it's an extreme privilege, all right? And uh, the people that talk such big game bravado that they're going to in the tribulation, they're going to be fighting hordes of demons, two hundred million man armies, <clears throat> and all this other stuff like that, not realizing that uh, it's complete nonsense. They're going to die. They don't even get their bodies brought back so that they get their new bodies until the first resurrection that happens at the end of the tribulation. All right, at judgment, all right, after Armageddon is completely over. So, do those spirits get to ride back in glorious battle at Armageddon? My uh, first guess that I can totally say without almost any doubt at all is uh, no. Uh, those that die in the tribulation don't get that honor, all right? They get the chance of going to heaven and being with God and everything like that, and they will get their new uh, spiritual bodies and, or uh, their new bodies and everything like that, but that will take place after Armageddon's over, which means in the bravado, of thinking how awesome they are, they get completely killed. They miss out on the on the the bema seat judgment and uh, the glory of the rapture and uh, uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then they don't even get to ride back in the glorious combat that they thought they were going to be getting into in the first place. It's a complete dishonor to them. All right. Whereas those that get to go all right in the rapture and are found worthy, they suit up and uh, and they get to ride back into battle with God. All right. Uh, and I don't, I don't take battle lightly. It's very, very serious, uh, especially to me. It's, it's one of my greatest, uh, greatest passions is to vanquish evil completely, and uh, that is why I, I push in this direction so much because I know that it rolls over into something that actually matters, that will last for eternity. All right, there is a hierarchy, there is a ranking system, and it's why I want you guys to take this so seriously. And I have the whole time. If you're sitting on your couch not doing anything, listening to a rapture date, and you barely make it into heaven, that's the scariest thing that I can possibly think of. All right, I'm not worried about hell or anything like that. I know I'm going to heaven, but to make it to to heaven and be ranked as Private Duffy. The reason I use the word Duffy is the most ridiculously dorky name I can think of, and that's what I'm comparing you to, is that that is your rank for all of eternity. You, you've done it. That's what you got. No crowns, no glory. Uh, you, get your, you get your shack to live in, okay? And, uh, and you go out with some people sometime, and uh, you're in a distant valley, and you see a castle built in the side of a mountain that is gigantic, and... Uh, and that is that privilege of that person that had sacrificed and lived for God and done what they were supposed to. During the time of the test, when it mattered, when it rolled over, when it's being documented, and you never get to make that up again. That's scary to me. That is really scary, and that is why I do every single thing that I can possibly do for God, because this is the only time that you get to do it. So selflessly do it. Every single time that you get a chance, you give something up. It's not a joke when Jesus says to the disciples, you know, but those that have given up a uh, house, property, uh, sisters, brothers, uh, wives, husbands, everything else, you know, you will be re recomposed for this a hundredfold, all right? You're, you're, he's not joking around. He, he does give it back, but uh, that is that selflessness that we have to take here, all right? And that is why it's so worth it. How do you give up stuff like that? If it doesn't go along with God, property gets in the way of you doing uh, missionary work. You let it go. Uh, <clears throat> You have a, a, a family member that's holding you back and saying, hey, you need to stop this. Uh, you know, live your best life right now. God's not coming back anytime soon. You push him away. You constantly do what you have to and follow what is right, which is God. And, uh, and if you do this, the reward is worth it. And that's how you build it up. This is how you build a rank. This is how you build, you know, your rewards, the jewels, the things like that that are going to last forever, where you've built it in heaven, where moth and rust do not take it away. And to just barely make it in, which so many are doing, just looking for that rapture date while you've never done anything for God ever, and you're still living in a mansion and living it up, you haven't even had a hard time hit you yet. 
you have no idea what you're rolling into. You're, you're rolling into an eternity of being a peasant, okay? You wondered how in the past, you know, uh, there is nobility and things like that that people are born into, and then there's a peasant, and sometimes you can work your way through the system and get up to a better place. Well, that's not gonna happen over there. What you've built, when that rolls over, whether you're a poor pauper now, if you've done the works for God, if you've lived for it, boom, you get rolled over as that king, okay? You get to have the honor honor of ruling over five, ten cities during the thousand year reign, being with God, getting brought into the meetings where you're at the high enough rank and uh, the lower peasants are and stuff like that. You you get that prestige and it lasts forever, all right? And so if you've ever wondered how that happened, this is your chance to make that happen in a realm where it lasts forever and it counts. There's nothing more important than living a life for God, seriously. And that is why I, I tell you to take it so seriously. But in this process of, of talking, I was hoping when I told God, you know, yeah, I'll keep going, that I could create living weapons that could go out there and do the opposite, all right, in a counter move of what Masons are doing and the forces of darkness are doing, pulling people away. You could go on and spearhead these people uh, and find them, all right? I found so many people that have pulled out of churches and stuff like that and think there's no hope. And it's like, oh, you have no idea. There's way more hope for you. You actually did the right thing. You saw the filth and evacuated. You never needed that in the first place. Uh, the word church is a, <clears throat> a translation of the called out ones, those who choose to follow Christ, all right? If you have that relationship with them, uh, you're better than any building. You're better than a one. Uh, every Sunday uh, activity, you have it, you walk with them daily, okay? So be encouraged, all right? But uh, it, the whole thing was to be a counter move. That is what all these instructions are for. You should have already been running the race from the very beginning when I started talking. And then when you come up to these questions, one, one after another, when I was a kid, I ran, had a Jehovah Witness friend, and he said, if you could tell me where in the Bible it says, uh, Jesus is God, then I'd believe, all right? And I didn't know the verse. I couldn't say John uh, 1030, all right? I couldn't say that. Uh, uh, me. I and the Father are one, where Jesus points out that he is God, you know. But over time, one battle after another, you keep getting stronger, you keep getting better, you keep getting more stuff brought up. So you're dealing with, you know, Seventh-day Adventists and stuff like that, which there's a lot of around here. All right, and they're talking about... They're talking about, uh, you know, Sunday Law being the mark of the beast. And, and then there's tons of videos where like, would you take a chip in your hand? Oh, yeah, sure. Would you take that uh, in the shoulder? Yeah, sure, because that's not the mark of the beast. Because they're mistranslation that they've done. What have they have done? The same thing that the other 1,800 creations happened. Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, Mormonism, okay? They've taken the interpretation that somebody got of the Bible and they've turned that into their scripture so that they don't even look at the Bible anymore. They're reading like watchtowers and stuff like that. All right. And then just like everything, they have their own, they have their own deception and 70 Adventists are one, they're big one. When you look at all the stuff that they talk about, just so much information, a lot of it is, uh, a lot of it is real. But when you look at it, it almost looks like a dictionary. And in the process of that, people get lost in it and think, well, it's all, it's so much information. Some of it's true. It all must be true missing the complete point that it isn't because within that slipped in uh, the whole works relation uh, the whole works based thing you know where they need to be going on Sunday and how they're following the law when they never were in the first place to uh, keep any bit of the law or to not do it fully you know you're 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 punishing yourself and they're putting themselves back under the law in the first place and what is this created also within their false teaching that they've replaced the 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 church has replaced or they have replaced the Jews so they look at the tribulation and they have put all that stuff that the Jews have to go through during the tribulation on themselves. So what do they believe? In a post-tribulation rapture, all right? Like I've told you before, it's not their belief, it's their consequence being played out as their belief, all right? But the more you know, the more you've read, the more battles you get into one at a time, you come over it, you know? And then you can you can point it out when you talk to a Jehovah Witness or whatever. I'm like, uh, Jesus is Michael. Uh, you might want to read uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and 2, you know, pointing out the significance and power and how Jesus was way before the angels, way before it, and uh, and so much higher, all right? No, he's not Michael the archangel, okay? And uh, him and the Father are one, you know, John 10, 30. And, uh, and you have this ability to do that, but it only comes from one battle at a time. And that was the whole point, you know, to keep teaching different things, different things that you're going to come upon, different questions. And all the videos were to help you do that, to overcome all these different questions and stuff like that. And after all this time, all these different 
messages and hate messages and things that I've had to go through to keep this going and alive so that you could be the perfect weapons. We get right up here to the end. This whole thing's about to break loose. And 99.9% .9 of you are still wearing diapers. Not one of you have reached out and tried to go after it. There's been a few that I've heard that have uh, that have tried. And good on you. I, uh, I honestly am proud of you for doing it. It's not easy. It's not easy. And you use your own God-given techniques and stuff like that. And I've told you, you really can have spiritual gifts. But you can't have a price. God's not going to give you something that's going to pull you away. And in America, people are just bribed so easily with everything. From monetization and stuff like that. Do it selflessly. And you can do it. Whereas in other countries, they don't, I've seen, or they don't seem to have that. And, and a spiritual gift will be just given to them like almost instantly. It's like, wow, that's incredible. And you use that to, and you grow it. And you master your own skill until you're a master of your ability. Like my gift of spiritual discernment and knowledge and stuff like that. And I've used it over and over and over again. Which is like a doubler, a quadrupler, all right? It brings me the information that I have in the first place to talk to people about the other stuff that I wouldn't get if I wasn't looking at other people's hearts or getting the information from God and then putting it on and stuff like that. And, and he will give it to you if you're doing it. But nobody's done it. I can't tell you the frustration I've had. I mean, I've pointed it out several times. It really makes me angry that people haven't wanted to do anything for God at all. And there, that I hear comments like, my 16-year-old daughter, she's pushing me around. I'm too afraid to talk to her about the Bible. What is your problem? Oh my, it's just, it's terrible. Stop trying to make friends with your kids and teach them what's right because it might be the only chance that uh, you can install the truth in them before it's too late and uh, they can give their lives to God if they go into the tribulation, which they most likely will, all right? It, it is so serious and that's why I, I get so frustrated because it's not a joke. It, it's, it's been serious the whole time and the enemy is recruiting to go in out there in a counter move of what we're doing or vice versa and, uh, and, and they're pulling people out, left and right. The, the people are falling away, just like scripture says, there's a great falling away like never before. And the bad guys are winning. And it makes me so mad when people are coming up to one person waiting on what they're gonna say, all right, like me, when you were never supposed to be following me in the first place, I'm a teacher, I'm supposed to be your brother, and then you call me while you're wearing your diapers. I'm, go I'm up here in Delta and you're, you're, you're uh, wearing diapers and you're calling me your brother like we're equally yoked. Man from Delta comes back from the army. He gets crew. He gets Christmas off, and he run. He comes inside the house, and his kid at Christmas, who's five years old, has got a little toy Nerf gun, and he shoots him. He's like, "Dad, look, I'm just like you." Oh yeah, son, you're just like me. Cute pat on the head, right? All right. And then, then we get back to reality. All right. He's a five-year-old playing with a Nerf gun, and his dad just got out of combat in some foreign country. He's the tip of the spear, the best of the best the U.S. military has to offer, all right? The best of the best. And he says, yeah, dad, I'm just like you. That's what it's like when you guys call me brother when you say that. That's, that's exactly what it's like. It's like you're grabbing the biggest loogie you possibly can and spitting right in my face in, the, in, in a huge, nasty insult. And uh, it's infuriating. It's infuriating to see. And not only that, uh, it's heartbreaking at the same time because I know when this rolls over and you're rolling to heaven, you're expecting all this great stuff you're going to be coming in as private duffy for all of eternity and that's a choice that you've made and i've given you all the opportunity and then even worse even worse one of the hard things about it is uh, i'm a weapon of indignation you were literally going to say i didn't know god and god's going to flash me talking to you at some time or all the people out there that have and you're going to hear exactly uh what, what was said and there's not going to be any denying it whatsoever you chose to do it out of fear or out of the love of the world and it's so dangerous it, it's not it's not a game at all there is no time left get right with god walk with him repent and for crying out wow reach everybody you can all right that's been the whole point of this channel okay the whole entire point Right now, there is chaos breaking loose all over the world, all right? Down in South Africa, there's flooding in Germany. There's rioting in France and everything like that. People are uprising. And, of course, on uh, just as the Illuminati like, you know, order out of chaos, they will use this to their advantage. But there's an advantage that we have in chaos, in breakdown, in hardship like that. When things line up and show Scripture and where it's at, it opens a door like never before to talk to people about God, all right? You talk to somebody... When they're at their best, they don't want to hear about God, but when they're broken down and there's nothing left and they're looking for an answer, that is an open window where they're like, if you can just give me some hope, I'll take it. And that is when you can present Christ. So there's an open window. 
Just like the bad guys have a move, we have a counter move at the same time. And during hardship, that opens up, all right? So what I want you to do, what you should have been doing the whole time, is I want you to think right now, one target. One target, whoever that person is, whether it's a family member or a friend that you've always wanted to talk to or whatever it is, I want you to think of that one person right now. And I want you to hatch a plan, not, uh, not at the end of the month, but uh, right now, come up with something and I want you to go talk to them, whatever way that you can. Go talk to them and talk to them about God, okay? All right? This is going to vary, and you have to calculate that variance, all right? You have to feel it out. Pray to God. Ask for openings, strength, rebuke any barriers that would come in the way, all right? Do that before you go in there. And then talk to them about God, whatever uh, whatever way that it it, uh, it transpires, okay? And it can be multiple different things, all right? All right? Yellowstone. <laughs> the the earthquakes are upticking down there. That baby looks like it could pop at any time. It wouldn't surprise me, honestly, the closer we get to the 40 days, all right? But there are a number of different things that you can use, all right, that open up a conversation, the sign of Jonah, anything else, all right? The way that things are breaking down, how it looks like it's the tribulation, how the stuff lines up with it. You indirectly go in, act innocent, okay, about it, but you're secretly going in. You're to be cunning. You're as, you're as uh, you know, cunning as a snake, gentle as a dove in the process. You're not pushing or forcing anybody, but you have to be cunning at all of this, all right? And you go in there and you present it. You start to talk. A lot of the times, people aren't going to take the message, okay, of giving their life to God now, but if you can start to plant what you believe, where it's going, and how the only hope, you know, even indirectly, I use indirection all the time, you know, don't even put it on the purpose person. Tell a story about somebody else and tell the story of the other person that you're talking to so that they're indirectly getting the whole message that you're trying to give out. Point to the other person, how you talked to them this one time about God. You know, they didn't believe about stuff like that. And, you know, I, I pointed out all these different things and how it's lining up with it perfectly, but uh, most likely they're going to go into the tribulation, the worst time ever. And, uh, you know, I told him, if uh, if you find yourself in death coming in, <laughs> the whole world's in the, the whole, uh, you know, sandbox situation, uh, there are no atheists in foxholes, uh, you can ask the Lord into your heart. And you literally tell the person you want to talk to about a story about somebody else with all the information that this person needs, and they don't even realize that they're getting it indirectly, and it takes all the heat off of a direct approach, okay? That's another technique, okay, if you can kind of see and work that. But think of that one person and go out there and hit them. If you know, if everybody did that, do you realize how many people could be reached? And you know what you do after you do that one? You ask God for another. <laughs> you ask God for another and you take one target at a time and you go out there and you do what you can. And sometimes, yeah, you don't get it all the way through, you know, thank God. Aim for another target that you ask them for, and then maybe that one person will come back and they want to hear more, and then boom, you get to complete that, okay? But that has been the goal of this channel, right? To turn you into weapons, and as you do that, as you grow, okay? I don't know how much time there is left, but as you grow, all right? Let's pretend there's a little bit of time. As you grow, you're going to start becoming more powerful, more powerful, and you're not coming to me for any needs. You go straight to God, which is what you should have been doing the whole time in the first place. You pray to Him. You have information. All of a sudden, God starts giving you revealing secrets, and now you can share information with me. And uh, we're sharing back and forth. And way more information is coming out now of uh, the return of Christ and, and things like that. And it's absolutely incredible. And uh, you don't look to me for information. You look to God. And uh, if you are ever in a down situation, you might hear something I say that gives you an encouragement. And, and then we are brothers, okay? And uh, and that's what I want. Real, real brothers, okay, that are going to last, that go into attorney, that have rewards, that are standing at the highest ranks possible, okay? All right? My reference to Delta is a cross-reference of the military, all right? It's the highest branch, top tier one of the military branch that we're going to go into without getting anything crazy, Okay. The Delta, which doesn't even have a name for the kingdom of heaven, you could take Delta here in America, right, or in the world, the, the, the top, most elite branch ever, and times it by the greatest number that you could possibly think of, all right, and it still wouldn't compare to the most elite in heaven. It's it's no joke, all right, and these elite, this this top tier will will have the privilege, those that have seek God's face, who have, have sacrificed everything, done everything for God, are the best of the best, They will they will get those privileges, okay? 
And, uh, and that is a family that I've always been seeking my entire life because it's never enough unless I'm around the absolute best. The absolute best there is, and I've been searching for a family my whole life, and I thought maybe, maybe, just maybe, it could be created through the information I have, and, uh, and I don't see that happening at all, right? And, and it's made me lose a lot, a lot of hope. Uh, in the channel and everything else, and that is why I get so frustrated because at every single land I'm just I'm blocked from I'm blocked from being around people. I have to constantly be an island unto myself. There is nobody that uh, that will that will reach out, that will try, that will try to constantly be better, to always be ready, to be great in every single situation, to be a constant representation of God uh, and not a letdown where people just stand in awe like, wow, where does this guy come from? Why is he so good? And then they can represent, well, I'm a Christian, you know, the best of the best, which the world doesn't do. They, they come in in weakness. And it's one of my greatest frustrations that I have because Christians, one of the greatest things that we get is God takes us in in our brokenness. And uh, the problem is, is most people go through their best days and then when they're completely broken, they give themselves to God and then they want to stay in that brokenness and, uh, and not represent the kingdom of God. And, uh, and I haven't seen a situation where it's me, where I become a Christian and I want to represent the absolute best because I am, because he is the best to the rest of the world. I haven't seen that in anyone else. So it's always brokenness, brokenness, brokenness. Why the bad guys recruit the most elite. And it's infuriating because they always seem to get, you know, and the only time that we see this where it's not like that, where they're not ditzy or anything like that is uh, the Paul situation. All right. He knew the scriptures and everything else when he flipped over. Uh, totally badass, totally incredible. And I've wanted to see more of that in Christianity, and I don't, and it frustrates me. So I thought, you know, maybe it could be created if, uh, if the information is presented. But you have to use that information. It's not something that you watch, right? You could, I'm never going to stop having information coming in. I'm always going to continue. It never stops going. So if you're waiting for a day when, okay, that's the last day of information. It's finally tapped that. Now I can go out and do it. You're going to completely miss the whole thing. It is the equivalent of watching your personal trainer get more information, get smarter, get better. All right. And as they're growing, all right, you're still sitting on the bench waiting while they're watching, while they're learning. If you haven't been lifting the weights along with them, when the whole thing rolls out, rolls over, you're, you're going to die of your old age or whatever, never gained any strength or anything else. And you might know all the information there is in the world, but you haven't applied it. It means nothing. Okay. While they have grown, gotten stronger, been in competitions and, uh, and been rated as the world's best. Okay. If you're not doing it, if you're not applying with it, you're, you're not growing. You can, you can watch all the live long day, but it is to apply. Okay. Each one of these things is to answer a new question, to help get you into the new point so that you can, you can do it. And God has all these different uh, areas that we come in. Some of us come from, you know, uh, new age backgrounds or occultism or Mormonism or anything like that. And because of those backgrounds, that can be your specialty. It's your strong point because you know it. People will listen to you. I've seen people come out of Mormonism and then turn in now other Mormons that have been in hardship and been pushed out by the church or seen the falsies. They can talk to you about the love of Christ. No, no, it's not all fake. It's real. You just were on the wrong side here. Or in the cultism of New Age or something like that, you know, they won't. They might not want to listen to me, but somebody who's been in the New Age, they've been in their cult practice rituals, they've seen the UFOs, they've uh, conducted ceremonies where they show up and everything like that, you know, they can tell them the demonic principles, what they actually are and stuff like that. And the more apt to listen to them, God will use your abilities and where you've been and you actually have a stronger, people who have been through hardship and stuff like that, you don't realize the strength that you actually get from going through that crucible and, and how it's actually made you powerful than the rest of the world, okay? And, uh, and that is your advantage. So I want you to think that one person, okay? And I want, you to, uh, I want you to go out there and talk to them in whatever way you can, whether it's on the phone or anything else, and tell them the seriousness of how this is lining up, all right? Whoever it is. And maybe you've talked to everybody you know. So maybe uh, look for somebody on the street, okay? If that's easier for you. But wait, pray about it, look. And uh, when you get into that conversation, you know, uh, drop uh, drop the info bombs that lead to uh, the seriousness of this and how it all leads back to Jesus Christ. Okay, it's so it's so important, and we're uh, we're almost out of time here. It's a, it's no joke. Okay. I never know how long this is going to go. I expect them to shut down all this information this fall or this winter, maybe sooner, and uh, you won't be able to get it anymore. Like I say, it's a, it's a ticking time bomb. So what you have, what you know, is going to be as far as you go, unless you've recorded different things and stuff like that. But why hold on to it when you can have it seared into your heart and have that information the same way that I have Scripture seared into my heart? It doesn't matter if I lost my Bible. I already know all the Scripture. It's, it's written on my heart, okay? So can continue to push do it in this last stretch that we have reach out 
try to win those souls as much as we can because the enemy is out there like a roaring lion trying to pull everybody away and they're doing it i literally have heard from the other side how they've been recruited to go in there and do just that and we need to be doing our part the counter move, all right, that pulls people to God, that helps the brokenhearted, right, that gives them hope, gives them encouragement in this hour on what's going on and gives the answers, right, that they can't find anywhere else, but only in Christians because they're the ones that seem to know. Be the light of the world. Be the light you were supposed to. Don't hide it under a bushel, all right? Shine it on top of a mountain. Be the legend you were born to be, okay? And uh, and make me proud for crying out loud. That's all I ask for, okay? Make me proud so that when you actually do get that chance to call me brother, I know that it's legit and I'm proud. I'm, I'm proud to uh, I'm proud to call you brother, okay? But uh, but don't just call me that for no reason if you're not going to do anything. Uh, I take it so seriously, okay? All right, I got a few different things out. I hope this uh, I hope this helps. The world's in chaos right now. It's only going to get worse, all right? Use this as an opportunity to talk to people. It's no joke, all right? God bless. I'll catch you next time on the unleashing. I'll see you in the air. Bye.